It's the summer before my senior year of college and I'm sitting on campus when a chat pops up with a phone number. The message says, give this number a call. There's a guy who wants to talk to you about a job opportunity. I haven't applied for any jobs. I haven't expressed any interest in jobs, but I'm getting a cold email from somebody else saying, you need to talk to this guy. How did this happen? How did somebody reach out to me while I'm still studying economics? Let's talk about how to crush it as an economics student. Hi, I'm Craig and welcome to Market Power where we are creating a community of people interested in and excited about economics. But as I've been chatting with you in the comments, I feel like a lot of you are students interested in taking your economics education to the next level. You're not satisfied with what you're getting in your classes, you enjoy them, but you wanna go further. You have an idea about a career you wanna pursue and you want to make sure you're setting yourself up for that. You have goals, you have visions, and you wanna know how studying economics will help you reach that vision. In this video, I'm gonna talk about the vision that I have for how we can help you achieve your goals. First, let me dispel a myth about how to stand out as a student. When I was in high school, I thought the way that you stood out as a student was through good grades. By definition, standing out means that there's some information about you that makes you unique, that makes you different than the other people that we're looking at. Everyone's special, Dash, which is another way of saying no one is. That makes it impossible with grades to actually stand out because think about it, you really only have five grades. You have A, B, C, D, and F. And of course you have like the little gradations like pluses and minuses. So maybe you get a little bit finer detail, but the Fs and the Ds for the most part are dropping out. So you have A, B, and C as the remaining grades. That's only three different types of information. You're only creating three real groups. And with grade inflation, you're finding more and more people in these top groups. And so there's just not enough information in grades to actually let anybody stand out. And when everyone's super, <laughs> no one will be. I learned that the hard way when I went and applied to schools when I was finishing high school. You know, I worked really hard to make sure I had fantastic grades and then I applied to a bunch of selective schools and I got rejected from all of them. And it was a transformative moment for me because I realized that having good grades was not a lot. I had fantastic grades. I had some of the highest grades in my entire school. but. There's nothing else about me that was distinctive, that was unique, that set me apart from other applicants. So when I got to college, I knew that I had to be more intentional. I had to find something that was gonna make my experiences in college stand out to the places that I was applying to. The number one piece of advice I have for that is for you to start building something while you're in college. What do I mean by building something? It can be as simple as just doing research. And that's what I'm gonna focus on over the next few weeks is how to do research as an economics student. When I say doing research, I mean using what you've learned in economics to answer questions that you don't know the answers to. Research is really the only way that you truly learn. And I can give you an example. One of the last classes I took in college was an intro to music, I believe it was. I don't even remember the name. It was a general education requirement that I had to take this to fill. And I was in there with just a bunch of freshmen. I'm almost graduated and I just have to get this class out of the way. I do not remember anything that I learned in that class. I can remember like the classroom that I was in. I remember where I was sitting. I remember just trying to get through the class. I don't remember any valuable things I learned from that class. Not that there weren't valuable things, but I was not taking that class with the intent to use what I learned to answer questions that I had. I was taking that class to satisfy a requirement. Now let's contrast that with a class I took my freshman year of college, and that was 13 years ago, 14 years ago. Oh my gosh, it's 14 years ago, not just 13 years ago. 14 years ago, I took a Japanese class because I was just so interested in Japanese. My best friend in elementary school was Japanese, and he, this was, this is the early 90s when Nintendo and all these systems were just coming out, and he was getting those Nintendo games before anyone else in the United States. I would go over to his house and he's playing these games in Japanese. I just thought, this is so cool. I want to, learn more about this culture that gives you early access to video games. Probably not the strongest motivation for learning a language, but I got there and I wanted to learn it. And I spent time studying it. And then I would go out and I would talk to the Japanese students at my college to try and practice it more. That is a form of research. It's not just sitting there listening to a lecture. It's taking what I've learned and then trying to answer a question. And that question could be, how do I make friends with this guy? That's as simple as research can be. 
and it has a powerful impact. I can still recognize some of the characters I learned that year. I know a few of the words. I didn't end up pursuing Japanese, but my son, who's interested in Pokemon, has now started expressing interest in Japanese because of Pokemon, and I've been able to at least help him recognize some of the characters and start learning those characters because of what I learned 14 years ago. That's amazing that research, even at its most basic form, can have such a long lasting impact. And research is what brought me to this phone call where I am talking to a guy who is interested in getting me a job in movie finance. And movie finance just seems so out of this world, except for I had done some research on movie finance. I had worked at a movie theater in high school and I really enjoyed it. I loved learning about movies. I loved seeing how things were going. And then when I was in an economics class, I had the opportunity to write a paper on whatever I wanted. Now, a lot of people were just downloading random data. They were just doing whatever it was the teacher told them to do. And I said, I want to stand out. I know that I need to build something to get above and beyond. I don't want just a good grade. I want something that's going to make me stand out. And so I decided to do my own paper where I was going to look at movie content and its effect on movie ratings. I collected a bunch of data. I did the analysis. It turned out well. A professor saw what I did. He said, let's take that up another level. Let's use this to understand movie revenues. Let's understand how movie content affects box office revenues. We wrote this thing up, it went out into the world, and this guy saw, this guy who I'm on the phone with, he saw the paper that I had written, and he called me up because he said, look, you are the kind of person that we want to get involved in this industry. There are opportunities that are available only to a few people, and the fact that you've done this work shows me that you're the kind of person that could do well in this career. And that's the power of building something while you're still an undergraduate. You are creating something of value for the world. They see that, and they say, that's something that we appreciate, and while you're creating that value, you are developing expertise, you're developing skills. Applying what you learn helps you figure out the things that are important and the things that you don't understand. And then you can refine those skills as you continue to do your research and as you continue to build. I'm not the only one with this experience. I talked to Isaac Knowles at Fortnite and he talked about how he researched video game economics while he was an undergraduate and the opportunities that opened up for him. If you haven't seen that video, go check it out. It was an amazing experience to talk to him. So let me outline for you what I see coming in the next couple of weeks with these videos. First, I'm gonna give you a live demo of my research process and just a really almost simple, silly question, but I'm gonna show you how I did it. I'm gonna time you to show you how long it takes for me to get through all of that. It's gonna be a fun one, so keep your eyes open for that video coming out next. Then I'm gonna talk about the whole research process. How do you ask a good question in economics? How do you go find data to answer that question? How do you do the analysis so that way you can actually find out something about that question? And then how do you publish? How do you get this thing out in the world so it creates opportunities for you? When those videos come out, I'm gonna put those videos right up here so that way you can click on them when this is done. If they aren't out yet, go ahead and click here to subscribe so that way you can be notified when they come out. I appreciate the input from this community and I'm excited to take your game to the next level.